Welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you. Wherever you're listening to me from, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. Uh, there is a beautiful video I'd like you to watch, but before I let you watch the video and uh, have access to the emotions, I'd like to please let you, um, let you understand that it is not about attacking individuals. It is about our intentions. Now, the person that you are about to watch in this video has just found the love of Christ. And I know that some of us immediately we see him. The first thing will be like, you may think that the video you're about to watch was done while he was still in the occult. So when you start listening to him and got to know that he, he is, he was actually telling his story with the way he looks, the next thing will be, ah, uh, no, this one is still far deep into occult. No, that is not how to actually place these things. I've been, I listened to this guy and it occurred to me that most of us, what we are playing actually is religion. You know, I've been talking about religion. I've been talking about religion quite different from Christianity. And I, ha I said that I have quit playing religion for a very long time. And I'm not actually doing sociality if there is anything like that. I am a Christian. Some say, some say they don't believe in Christianity. I am a Christian and I believe in Christianity. I believe in the love of Jesus Christ. And it was that love that found this man. Now understand that as a new convert in the Lord, he has come to the Lord the way he was and the Lord did not reject him. Please don't make any comments that we put off the next person that might be in line to receive the love of God. I believe in the testimony of this guy and I believe that as he continues to walk with the Lord, God will begin to work in his life. His consistent work with the Lord will culminate into the Lord working out something in his life. Remember that there are three stages of salvation. He has just experienced one, which is the past salvation. And from here, it takes him to the second phase of salvation, which is the work in progress, the sanctification. And I love when the Lord Jesus says in, Matthew, in John chapter 8, verse 32, where it says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And I said, I love most the rendering of the King James Version of that verse. The truth shall make you free. As he continues in this life of the new life that he has found in Christ Jesus, he would get to that point of sanctification. The Lord begins to sanctify him. Every one of us are on this level. It is only those that have, have slept with the Lord and by the grace of God, they made it those that are the ones that have experienced the third stage of salvation. Now, being glorified, even though that, yeah, we wait when the Lord shall reward everyone. But then if you have left the flesh and you are living, you know, in a, a place of serenity, I think you have crossed that in a verge. So I just want you to please listen to the young man and feel his pause. And I think many of us, including myself, have got a lot to learn from him. Happy viewing. Remember, this was the former, uh, the co-founder of the Satanist, Satanist Church in South Africa, Church of Satan in South Africa. This was the co-founder. So this was, is the ex of former Satanist, now turned to Christ. God bless you. I'll be seeing you at the end of the video. Thank you. Okay, so I think it is one o'clock already, so I think we can start. Um, hello everyone that's watching this video. Hi. Um, firstly, I think it's very important to put a, let's call it a disclaimer, but, but something that I feel I want to say at the beginning of this video is that what I'm saying today is... I'm talking from 
my experience okay so I am not here to take anybody on um, I'm not here to test people's beliefs whatever your your beliefs are that's not why I'm doing this I'm doing this live video because I had many more than a hundred people on whatsapp and almost 200 people on facebook since last week sending me messages wanting to know why did i leave the south african satanic church as well as why did i turn my back on satanism so that is why i'm doing this video to be very honest um i initially thought i will slip out the back door quietly and I didn't really think that people would be this interested in why I am doing what I'm doing. So I just want to say that. And again, I'm going to talk from my experience. I'm going to talk about my choices. I am not taking people on. I'm not here to get into arguments about religion, beliefs or any of that. That's not why I'm doing this. So I want to talk about my experience, my personal experience that I've had. I was for more than a month not allowed to talk about my choices and decisions for obvious reasons because um, certain organization wanted to obviously prepare themselves as well um, for when this when when this comes out or comes into the news I've also have um, some questions from journalists that I'm going to answer today. The reason I'm doing that as well is that I, I'm not in a space at the moment where I want to do interviews with people from the media um, and stuff. So that's also why I'm doing this video and why I'm leaving it out there so that if people want to write about it, it's their choice. But this will be my statement. This, this will be my statement that people can go back to. And certainly I will refer them back to that. So I'm not going to answer all the questions, obviously, because some of them are very, well, let's say similar. So I'm going to address after I've talked about my experience, I will answer some of the questions that people from the press and the media have sent me. That's more or less similar questions. So I, I, I will answer that. So I just want to give you a little bit about my background because I feel it is important in the narrative and it is important for context maybe. Um, and that is why and how I got involved in Satanism in the first place and I was shown a lot of things over the last month about myself so today I'm going to talk to you from a, and again from a personal space but with an open heart so I initially wrote a very long statement that I typed out over the weekend and I was going to read it but then about an hour ago, I felt, you know what, maybe let, let's just talk from the heart because this is personal. So that's why I'm going to talk from my heart. And I actually feel it's time that more people just start talking, speaking their truth and, and talk. So I'm certainly encouraging people to do that as well by doing this video, hopefully. So I got involved with Satanism because at the time it resonated with me being very broken um, and being very sad without realizing it and I think the reason why a lot of people resonate with Satanism is they come from a very broken place and I have met thousands of Satanists over the last three years and I'm not saying that they are the intentions are bad or whatever but they are extremely broken and extremely hurt and that's the one thing they all have in common um, and that's the thing that coming from a place of hurt and being broken is that's why I resonated with the philosophy because the way certain things are written it's written from a place of anger and people read it and they would resonate with it and they would say but this is what i've been feeling and if you are broken you will certainly resonate with the philosophy so that is how i got involved in it and 
that was more than four years ago and things progressed from there and as most people know we took um, the church the, the, the satanic church very publicly at the time because we felt it's you know uh, uh, it's needed to stand up against certain things and represent satanism so at that time i did believe that is what is my truth and what was real to me not realizing how broken i was so i'm also not here today to say that i'm a victim because i've certainly never been a victim i've never claimed victimhood or any of that so just about the background but my experience of what I've had in the last month plus is what I want to share today and, and that is the topic of the video to get back to back to the topic at hand is um, why did I leave and why did I resign from the South African Satanic Church as well as why did I turn my back on Satanism so let's start by saying that I've never I've never known unconditional love in my whole life and up to today there's only sorry there's only four people four sorry four Christians there's definitely more than four people but there's been four Christians in my whole life that have shown me what unconditional love is Oh, I thought I'm not going to get emotional, but it is what it is. So, and I want to thank those four people today, and it adds to this story. So, Donnie and Adele Frey, I don't know. I can't. Words cannot express what you have done for me. Adele sent me a message over this weekend, and and she said, "But you know, I've just I've done such a simple thing. I've I've just showed you love. People mean so." To show someone love is everything. It's not a simple thing. You have showed me everything. You've showed me the love of Christ. I've seen it in you. So, Donnie and Adele, thank you so much for that. And you've showed me unconditional love in a time where I was a monster, an ugly person, where I took people like you on. You showed me unconditional love. So thank you for that. So the important part of, of my experience is that in the middle of May last, it's about yeah, two months ago, I did my last interview for the South African Satanic Church, not knowing that that would be my last radio interview that I'm doing, um, and I and I most people know about the interview. It was it was a Cape Talk, and there's a woman who works there. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, I didn't speak to her before this video, so I'm not sure if I can mention her name. I'm just going to call her Amy. So Amy has been communicating with me about media stuff about the South African Satanic Church over such a long period of time. And we never met in person because of COVID and all the interviews was online, etc. So I did this interview and after the interview, this lady came to me. And in this interview, I said, I don't believe in Jesus. And I don't believe that Jesus Christ exists because I didn't. And she came to me 
after the interview, after I said that. And she hugged me and she held me in a way that I've never been loved. That's all she did. She didn't say anything. She just said, it's nice to finally meet you in person. And she just hugged me and she held me. And a week later, through WhatsApp, through a status, I saw this woman is a Christian. I couldn't believe it because I've never had a Christian do that. I've never had, I've never experienced a Christian showing that much love and acceptance unconditionally. After I've said the things I've said, she did that. And it stayed with me. I, I just like, I said, oh, okay, cool. She's a Christian, whatever. And then a week later, and I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Satanism. I don't want to, I don't want to talk about the details of it. But in the occult, there is certain rituals that you do to ascend to the top of a pyramid and you can only do a certain amount at a time and after that interview after that interview I had a meeting with council members at the, at the church and they said okay great now we've done all these interviews and people know and it's growing Satanism is growing and believe me people it is it's growing And I had to do a ritual by myself to see what is the next step? What is the next thing? How do I get more, more power, more influence? And I did this ritual and I opened myself up. And Jesus appeared. And I was extremely cocky and I said, whatever, if you are Jesus, you need to prove it. And he flooded me with the most beautiful love and energy. And I recognized it immediately because that woman at the radio station showed it to me. That's how I recognized the love of Christ. Because four people, four Christians showed it, not the others. So I recognized it. I'm going to change specs, sorry, because transition is not transition apparently anymore. Excuse me. Oh, there we go. I recognized it immediately because four people showed it to me and I didn't understand it at the time. I couldn't understand it because like I said, I didn't believe. Even when I was in Christian ministry almost two years ago, 20 years ago, apologies. You, you think you believe things and you're, okay, so there's a book that tells you certain things and therefore it's that. I never knew it until a month or two ago. And I could recognize it because there's people, there's four people who showed it to me. And it's not the people who fight you and they declare spiritual warfare and they do things and it's not, that's not the love of Christ. The love of Christ is unconditional. And for the last month, 
I've been having conversations, real conversations with God. And there's things that we will never, never understand with our cognitive minds. We will never understand it. And I've had people, obviously, in the last few weeks say, you know what, it's cognitive dissonance and whatever, like intellectual things. And I've studied this and so have I. I, I. I've been an atheist for most of my life. I've been a Satanist for four, five years. So I understand where a lot of those people come from. But when you experience it, it is something different. And again, I'm not here to attack people, but I want to get a few things off my chest. I... I have for a long time believed that I am not worthy of God's grace because I'm gay and because I have certain abilities. So people made me believe for a very long time I'm not worthy of that. Let me tell you something today. The kingdom of God is not a gated community. The kingdom of God is open to everybody. It's called grace. It's called grace, people. And somebody forwarded me. I want to talk about this stuff. Somebody forwarded me a video over the weekend. of a Christian taking on a Satanist talking about his piercings and his long hair and he's going to hell and all of that stuff and he also said he used an example saying that your God doesn't come to you you have to go to God like going to a barbershop or whatever listen sweetie listen Love. God is everywhere. God is omnipresent. And Afrikaans say ons alom teenwoordag. That means everywhere. That means at every satanic ritual, at every interaction with another human being. Everywhere. And God can reveal himself to anybody at any time, anywhere. But when you tell people they're going to hell, when you tell people, when you call out their sins, when you tell people things like God will judge you, etc., you do not know grace. No one is worthy of grace more than the next person. Grace is for everybody. Grace is for doesn't matter what color skin you have. It doesn't matter which religion. Grace, God's grace is available to everybody. But it is our choice whether to accept that or not. And we constantly get opportunities for that. And this was my opportunity. And I took it. I made the choice. I, I chose light. I am living for light and it's because of that grace that I can do that and I pray I really pray my prayer is for everyone to ask if you are a believer ask God to show you that grace ask that 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 grace will be revealed to other people because it's not in religion it's not it's not Religion has hurt a lot of people, including me. This is how I got here. This is this is how, how I got here is religion. People would say, but the Bible says this and da, 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 and you're not worthy, etc. It's for everyone. It's open for to anybody. 
and I'm not here today to tell you, you must go and seek it and it's go and find it. and It will be revealed to you. There's constant opportunities. But these people that is going out there and saying that if you are gay or if you are a psychic or if you are have certain abilities and it doesn't fit into the box, therefore you are from the devil and da da da. Find it yourself. It's important. It's it's. I feel it's what the world needs. It's love. It's it's that unconditional love. And we all. It's it's our nature to judge people, etc. It it is what it, it's it's the human condition. And like I said, when you are hurt, when you're coming from a hurt place, you will deny that. And I did for a very long time. I denied it. To experience it, how to experience God's love is to turn it outward, to love other people, to love your animals. Animals come to this planet to show us unconditional love. I've worked a long time with 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 other healers and students I've trained people in healing and we would go to certain shelters and we will meet so many abused animals and I asked my student to share she's very gifted and she, she communicates with students and I, I asked her these animals that have so been so abused are they angry and she said to me no they feel so sad for humans because we don't get it. We don't get it. Sorry. It's just, I'm still processing a lot of the stuff. I've written so much and I'm going to share everything. And I'll do it in videos and I'm probably going to write a book. It looks like it. Wow. <laughs> but it's, it's time. It's, if, if you have an opportunity and you can love, that love is never lost. Nothing is lost in the mind of God. Nothing. And everything that exists sorry everything that will still happen is already it exists already in the mind of God we just haven't experienced it so this is why we're here we, we're here to experience that and constantly of course we make mistakes and but grace people grace is there that's the road back back to to who we truly are Sorry. So, I just, again, want to say, and I'm not, I'm not going to focus my life on trying to free people from Satanism and getting them out of the occult. Sorry. Uh, so battery warning, <laughs> loud shading. So I'm I'm not going to focus on that. That's not what I want to do. My focus is going to be on healing, on healing people, and having a space for people who are hurt. Who were hurt by other religions and people. That's what I want to focus on. There is people who's calling it, who has, who have a calling to deliver people 
help people away from Satanism out of the occult. And that is their calling, and they have a very rightful place. But what I want to focus on is healing people and loving people. That's what I want to do. I just want to love people. I want to show them that unconditional love that I've experienced through my work. And that's what I've chosen. And it's being shown to me little by little. I had a beautiful experience as well recently um, where I was just, I was walking on the beach and just talking, talking to God and my guides and angels and out of nowhere again. So this can be coincidence, but I know this person, we cross paths. It's, an old Wimmy that, that used to be involved with me more than 20 years ago when, when I was still trying to help people in, let's call it the, the apostolic way. And he knew, I mean, he was, he was already 60 at the time, so he's now in his 70s. But he already knew then who I was and he tried to show me that it's okay in, in ways that he could do it, obviously. But anyway, our paths crossed recently after 20 years. And he said to me, still thinking I'm obviously a Satanist, that I don't know why, but I have to have this conversation with you. And he said to me, imagine, imagine there can be a religion based on the teachings of Jesus because it's not it's not christianity and again i'm not dissing religion and and he wasn't either he was just saying the important thing is love is that teaching that unconditional love that is what it's important that that is what's important and i i'm going to focus my energy on that All right, thank you for staying up to this moment. I have to cut the video from here um, so that it won't be too long and put people off. It's already long, but I think the story is worth listening to. Now, I just want to make some kind of clarifications. I said something from the beginning, and if you listen to what I said in the beginning, then you know how to lay down your comments. I want you to understand that God, God loves the sinner. What he hates is the sin. And so salvation is for everyone. Jesus is for everyone. Although everyone may not be saved, but it is the will of God that all should come to repentance. But as we all know, many are already gone and the majority will not come to accept Jesus. And so this brother that has been arrested by the Holy Spirit, you know, it is the duty of everyone that is in Christ to not be judgmental. When I mean being judgmental, I don't mean that you don't tell people the truth. But you see, like there was a statement he made about hell, about someone saying that we go to God and not God coming to us. Well, that statement is true. But then it depends on the spirit with which it was communicated. Now, God loves the sinner. That sinner out there, that occultist out there. And that is why I said almost in every of the videos I've done in the past about the false prophets, you know, about all these deceivers that. They are, God has not foreclosed their salvation. If they can repent, if they can turn around and say that they are sorry to God and do the right thing, the Lord forgives them. So what the Lord hates is sin. Now, your love for human being, um, you know, the love of Christ for human being, you know, is that we must love one another. Jesus said, love your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes you want to ask, who is my neighbor? Your neighbor is not just the person you are who have eaten in the house. Your neighbor is that person that is beside you now is, is your neighbor. Your neighbor is that person that you meet on the street that needs some kind of loving. Your neighbor is that person you meet in the bus that needs some kind of loving. You may be a young man and you are in the bus and an elderly person is standing probably because he could not pay the tickets that could give him a seat. A pregnant woman 
you know, is standing because she arrived late and she's on a journey to somewhere and she, she didn't want to miss the bus. And you are fit. Now, that is your neighbor. And the love you've got to show is to consider that elderly person, consider that pregnant woman, consider that woman that has a baby strapped to her back, but, you know, she can't help herself. Consider that elderly person that is carrying a load that is so heavy and you can help to take that load up the mountain. Consider the, that, that hungry poor man that is by your side and you can actually do something to alleviate him. Now, this is how we go about showing the love of God. And we don't do these things to take advantage of them. We don't help women. Guys don't help ladies because they want to take advantage of them because they want the ladies to be dependent on them and so they can sexually exploit them. Now, this is not the love of Christ. You don't help women in your church because you want them, you know, to be so submissive to you that whatever you ask of them, including sex, they give it to you. You don't help that young man so that you monopolize his freedom. He cannot speak his mind anymore because you've helped him or you're helping him. Now, this is not the love of Christ. If that is what you intend, you know, doing. Now, the love of Christ is loving your neighbor as yourself. And then, but then, this love of Christ does not prevent us from telling the sinners the truth. Now, when we go out to preach, we don't preach condemnation. We don't tell them, we don't introduce the God that is a monster to them. We introduce the God that is a loving father to them, but just as lovely as a father can be, yet the father can be a disciplinarian. He can discipline those that run foul of the principles of his kingdom. But then all you need to show, introduce to people is the Jesus that loved them so much, and died on the cross for them. The Jesus that loved so much and, and he took upon himself the sin of the whole world. The Jesus that even though he was equal with God, he counted it not robbery, that he emptied himself and took you know, upon him the form of a man, the form of a slave, and he came and died for the world that actually doesn't you know, recognize him, that doesn't even deserve him. Yet this love, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him now, this love should propel them to believe. This love should make them to understand that our God is love. You know, it is quite different when we go out there and we are preaching to sinners. We just look at them. Hey, you there, you will go to hell if you die in this thing you are doing. But there are many people that will be put off like that. Many people actually may not. In fact, some will even fight you. So we are, we are ambassadors of peace and we need to love others and present the true Christ to them. And that is why I plead with people, even when you don't agree with anybody in the comments area, don't be so, don't be so, should I use the word pugnacious? Don't be so, don't be so harsh on persons. Don't be so harsh on people. You know, don't be so harsh on people. The person might be exhibiting his level of knowledge and understanding. You can imagine this brother. God forbid that he falls into the hands of wrong people. He falls into the hands of these false prophets and false teachers. You can imagine, even though that he has been saved by Christ, falling into the hands of the ungodly would make nonsense of every testimony that he has given. Because they will make him worse. Why is worse? They, you, know, you know, whatever they are. But God forbid. So, and we pray for the brother. Now, I'd like you to remember him in your prayers that the Lord himself will make him grow in knowledge, knowing the truth, and gradually the truth will begin to set him free. Thank you so much. I feel both emotional and excited in my spirit. The Lord is at work. And I want to ask that if there has been any one of you I may probably have offended, I have not shown love enough. Please forgive me. I am so sorry. And I didn't do it because I hate or because probably... Um, I was, I was, I was reacting to the, the, the tension of the moment. God bless you. I'll be seeing you in the next video. And my prayer is that may I not become instruments that will drive others away from the kingdom of, of God. May I become instrument in the hand of the Lord to save as many as will be saved. And as the Lord knows that my heart desire is not to work against the kingdom of Christ, but for the kingdom of Christ. And so to somebody out there who thinks that when I speak to, to highlight the wrong that is happening in the church, that I am trying to send people away, quit thinking that way. The Lord our God is king over all. Thank you so much. I'll be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you, shalom.